What's going on guys? I got Quason on the line. He is from Lost Worlds. Quason, what's going on, man? How you doing today? Doing pretty good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking, man. Absolute pleasure to have you on the channel today. So why don't you start off by telling us who you are, what your role is within Lost Worlds, the company? Yes. Yeah, so my name is Quason. Um, I'm the, the, the founder and the, the CEO, one of the partners of, of Lost Worlds, um, the first location-based NFT platform. Uh, platform, marketplace, experience. There's so many things that happens with the Lost Worlds, the Lost Worlds ecosystem. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you guys look like you have a strong project. You guys are thriving right now. So why don't you tell everyone what you guys are all about and what you want them to know about the project? Yeah, so like I said, Lost Worlds is, will be, it's a location-based NFT platform or G NFT or real world NFT platform. And, and really what we're focusing on is how do we bring real world utility to the NFT space? And my initial idea was, wait a minute, what if we were to geographically bound NFTs? What if we made the experience of minting NFTs or we bridge the experience of the metaverse with the real world by making NFTs something that you had to experience in the real world? You had to actually go there to mint them. Um, and this is this is an experiment and, and a journey that we're taking in order to, 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 to see that vision out, right? How do we bring real world utility to the NFT space? Can you tell me whereabouts is the project based? Where where are you guys based as a project and where you yourself are based? That's funny because it's just like we're our, we have an NFT platform that is about geographically bounding NFTs and it's about, you know, putting NFTs in places all over the world, but our entire team is literally all over the world. Um, we we jump around. I'm probably the one of the few who doesn't jump around uh, as much as the others. I'm based in New York, um, been here forever. Uh, and whereas, you know, some of our team is in Europe, some of our team is in South America right now. Um, and we're, we're always like kind of moving. We, we want, we're explorers. That's how we see ourselves. That's amazing. That's amazing. You know, when, when I hear stuff like that, Quason, I think to myself, digital nomad army you know we're all digital nomads we all we all love that lifestyle man and i gotta say i love seeing a project embodying that you know it's it, it just feels so close to home you know in terms of values and you know what we like doing our business you know i mean we we like doing it from remote locations and having that flexibility right so it's always saying you know, it's like we're just trying to get lost in the world so like that's that's how we get to experience the product is by actually traveling uh, literally, literally, yeah. Quason, can you tell me why society is not ready for the full-on metaverse? Yeah, so it's it's a real like thing that I keep thinking about. Um, you know, you, you see what Meta is doing. I actually refuse to call it Meta. It's Facebook. Um, <laughs> You see what Facebook is trying to do, um, where they're really doubling down on this idea of, of, of the metaverse, and they're doubling down on this idea that we will be living our lives within this fully immersed digital experience. And while I don't necessarily disagree with that, I also don't think the hardware of humanity is ready for that, right? I, I don't think within our generation and maybe even our kids generation, maybe our kids, right? Or kids, kids um, will be ready to put on the full on, um, you know, goggles and immerse our entire consciousness inside like it's Sword Art Online or Matrix, right? Uh, so I, I think there's gonna be a world in which there is a, a bridge, right? Or we're in the world in which there needs to be a bridge in order to have ha for that to, to happen or for that vision of, of being of a full on metaverse experience to happen. Um, and that'll be done through augmented reality. That'll be done through things like Lost Worlds where we're bringing some of the, we're bridging these whole digital experiences that can be considered metaverses um, into real world experiences, which are tactile, right? We talk about how the, the big hurdle that's happening right now in VR 
is really around the haptic feedback, right? The, the tactileness of things, right? Like if, if you get punch, do you feel the punch? Um, and they say we're not far off. They say it's like, you know, 15, 20 years away. However, those are really important experiences in order that that adds value to, to life, right? How you feel, you know, um, how you experience things in a tactile nature. So one of the things that we're doing with Lost World is we're trying to make sure people remember that we actually do live in a real world, right? Or we live in the world and then you should go out and experience it and maybe, maybe, you know, you know, seeing things in the world as they are versus just living in a digital ecosystem is, isn't really the best thing to do. Maybe go see the real world, right? And you'll get lost in it. Well said on that one. I gotta say, for my next question, what's your opinion and what do you think that the importance of bringing real world utility to crypto is? Yeah, I mean, we're we're seeing a lot of real world, quote unquote, real world utility being brought into crypto right now with, you know, you, you see the, the, the continued adoption of USDC. Um, we're going to start seeing more, I guess, real world utility. I, I had, a, you know, the news that just dropped recently that finance is going to be in the, the bid for, uh, or they're, they're one of the investors for the acquisition of Twitter along with Elon Musk, right? So you're going to see that integration happening um, a lot more from the from the, like the, the, the financial and currency perspective. Um, but when it comes to the NFT space where they're, the utility in the real world is, is really associated to like how like a star that uses that has a board ape right that, that's kind of and how you leverage that right there's there's no real use or value for for nfts yet i mean there are some use cases i, I won't lie but um that that mass adoption really has to take it off and we at los worlds we want to do our part right that our our overall mission is to bring real world utility to to nfts right we're, we're just so happening to use geographically bounded nfts or gnfts or location-based nfts as the first kind of entryway in order to to express that because what nfts bring to the table the, the value is just like, is so amazing. But until like, again, we're not ready for the metaverse yet. Right. So, but until we get, um, until we get there, before we get there, we have to find a way to, to bridge it to, to this real world. So, you know, how do we start getting retail stores to utilize NFTs, right? How do we start getting events like Coachella? Like when you go, to a Lana Del Rey concert, right? I don't know why I said Lana Del Rey specifically, but uh, <laughs> uh, a Lana Del Rey concert, right? And there's the merch is not going to be just physical merch anymore. It's going to be NFT merch, right? And NFT merch, right? Now, right? Like if you go to an event and you get an NFT, you have you just go to a website. I could go to that website in China. Well, maybe not China. I go to that website it's anywhere else in the world <laughs> and still get access to that NFT. But if they're geographically bound, or if they're location based, you minting that NFT at that Lana Del Rey concert is proof that you were there. And that value of that merch, the value of that moment, it's like having that like a Yeezus t-shirt because you were at the concert um, is just, it just has a different type of value and a different type of, of um, kind of experience right and that's that's real world value um however you want to project project onto that how can these location-based nfts impact the community and the culture of crypto I, i've been saying this a, a, a lot and and the, the way that i've been we've been approaching um what location-based nfts are is very uh, I mean, we're thinking about it in a very aspirational way um it it, we're not even 100% sure if, 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 if it will work, but we, we're, we're going to push the narrative um, because it's, so, it's, it's there for, for it to be taken. And that narrative is shared experiences is really what drives community, right? Um, you know, if you go to like, uh, if you meet somebody new, right? and you have a conversation and you find out, oh, we're from the same town or we went to the same college, 
you'll start noticing the conversation changes, right? Your, your relationship changes because there was a moment in time in which you had a shared experience and it allowed you to relate to each other. And when that, that still applies today in a lot of the NFT projects that exist, right? You know, where if you mint, um, you know, a pudgy penguin, you know, rest in peace, uh, that <laughs> you reject, you could, you know, I had the pudgy penguin with the do rag and a vest, right? And I rejected my, my personality onto that, right? And I said, I associated with that. And other people who had the same pudgy penguin, there was a, there was a shared experience right because we there's something about that 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 associates to a point in time so with location-based nfts all we're doing is we're creating another variable for creating shared experience and probably one of the more important ones which is location because where you're from defines so many things where you go defines so many things you know you meet somebody and I, if i ask you it's like yo have you been to japan and then you We'll, we'll get into a whole conversation about all the places that we love and it just creates emotion and it creates connection and and that that is community right it, what happens when there's a hundred people or a thousand people with that same energy and feeling you know i brought up the concerts right if you if you went to um i'm gonna say beyonce now if you went to a beyonce <laughs> concert and it was you know, it was like the best Beyonce concert. It's like the one everybody's talking about. The next day, the news is talking about it, right? But you were there and you had that NFT that um, that you were able to mint there. And that NFT gave you access to a special Telegram group or a special Discord channel, right? Because you could do that with Collabland or Avax Rarity or something like that. Um, that you're in a group of people who've had that shared experience and you guys can gush about all the nuance and details and it, it, that that is something that is core to the human experience that we're just trying to facilitate right now will will, will that actually pan out i, I want to find out right we, we want to we want to find projects artists um communities that want to use location-based nfts right you can just reach out to, to to us on our discord or even me on twitter um but who want to use location-based NFTs to be able to build their communities and use location as a function of community building. Wow, yeah. Well, speaking of community, Quason, can you tell me this? Who is your target audience? I mean, would you say that that's obviously NFT users and collectors, but, you know, who outside of that category would you say, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, and it's the it's the million dollar question, right? Um, man, I can't remember the number. Like, there the the total addressable NFT market is actually not big at all. And you know, some people will say, "All right, so then why are you doing this?" It's because we know the the future total addressable NFT market will be huge, right? Um, it's so right now we're focusing on people who understand. Uh, NFTs, and we're trying to build that core community w within there. However, we are parallel pathing in a lot of ways to allow by creating things like fiat on ramps, um, where we where we take away kind of the, the crypto aspect of it, right? Where we'll mint the NFT for you, or the, the NFT gets minted. Um, and we just help you set up a wallet the, you own the wallet still your custodial wallet but where you know you, you pay us in cash and we, we just do the transaction for you and we, we we get that into your wallet and that helps reduce the friction for people who don't want to set up a, a metamask wallet on their their mobile device because the only way you can get the, the nfts on our platform is through your mobile device so um there's lots of inherent friction in terms of addressable market size but part of that is like okay we're, we're we're the foundation to come in so today it is the nft market and then we're building for a lot of in the event space and um and people who are like kind of within a specific location and they have an opportunity to have a different experience, right? You could be standing on an NFT or at, at a soccer stadium and you don't even realize it. And But if you hit the Lost Worlds app, it's there. And then just making sure that there's a, a seamless experience for you to be able to open that app and and get that collectible or that, that valuable um, NFT uh, for the user.
right right and within within the nft users and collectors category i mean i guess there's there's always people who are curious or familiar with the avalanche network right with avax i mean can you can you speak a little bit to that as well yeah so you know we've we've been working on this for about a year um we've uh we built out uh, when we were doing like test runs, um, we actually ha- built our application um, on both the Ethereum and Avalanche uh, test nets. So Fuji on Avalanche and Rinkin B on, on, on Ethereum. And the idea is that we would immediately be, be multi-chain and there's probably still like a future where we, we will definitely be multi-chain, I should say. Um, and what, but what we realize is that there's a burgeoning a community within the Avalanche ecosystem um, because Avalanche as, as a whole, right, and the support that you get from the actual Avalanche, like, you know, business development team at Able Labs and things of that nature is conducive to companies like us experimenting as the, the, the blockchain itself, the Avalanche blockchain itself is becoming a top tier uh, a blockchain where, where it's it's not obfuscated and the, the nft market and the nft community is actually really active and really kind of like you know together so for us the idea is, is like let's get a really hot coal um within the avalanche community so that when we're ready to expand um it becomes it, you know it's just like turning it's putting tinder on a hot coal and then we can get a bonfire uh, out of that. When it comes to people in the ETH community, it's actually very easy for them to bridge over and we're, we're putting things in place in order to make, to make sure that bridge is is quick, right? You go to lostworlds.io slash discover, you connect your wallet. If, it, if it's on MetaMask, we'll, we'll immediately switch you to an avalanche. Well, we'll create an avalanche instance on that same wallet address, all right? That way, all you need to do, put in an AVAX or two, and now you can, um, mint your own uh, NFTs on the Avalanche Chico system. So we're also doing our part of bringing people over to the Avalanche Chico system, but also the user experience because of the gas fees um, and, and a bunch of other stuff just makes it so much easier, better, faster and for us to build in that space. All of this Avalanche talk is just making my mind wander. And I would honestly love your opinion on this as to why you think Avalanche will be a top three chain. You know, aside from the things you did mention or even recapping most of them, you know, give me your opinion on that, Quayson. I'd love to know. Yeah, so it's, I, I, I'll i say this, right? Um, I forgot who said it. It was somebody on Twitter. You know, you have those fun days on Twitter where people are just like shit posting, um, <laughs> but it's like really smart people. Um, <laughs> but you're like, wow, that was really rough, but that was actually really smart. And, and it was the idea that, you know, even if ETH2 delivers, right? Um, that it's already dead in the water once subnets come through with Avalanche, right? Um, from a technical perspective, I think av- like across the board, whether you're thinking about the, the, the tech, the community, the, the general ecosystem, right? The integrations, the partnerships, right? If Avalanche is not, it, it tends to be like in the top three, four, a four, like five, just call it five within most categories, um, in, in, in my opinion. So, and the, they they have like a very good business development team that a lot of the other big chains do not have, right? You, the, the ETH foundation can barely pay themselves. It's kind of a weird thing. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> you know, and then Solana has their issues with their, their stops and goes and whatever it may be um, on a technical side. But with, with the Avalanche, the tech is always is, is working, right? The, the challenge is that that they have tend to be more growth pains than they do like, hey, this is a big issue. And their business development team in terms of how do they expose Avalanche to some of the, the bigger institutions and to the bigger um, builders or players in this space 
is bar none compared to any other other chain. So even if users don't know about Avalanche, Bank of America does. You know what I mean? So uh, and if Bank of America ends up on a subnet and you don't even know that you're using Avalanche, right? It but you know. It, it, it creates a world in which it gets integrated and engaged within the, the the undercurrent of the crypto ecosystem. So I'm like, I'm super bullish on Avalanche. I'm super bullish on the team at Avalanche. I'm super bullish on the tech. I'm super excited about what's going to happen with subnets. I'm super excited about Cravada and their swimmers network right now um, and the team there. We really like those guys. Um, and kind of all the games that are going to just take things to the next level for for the network and you know lost worlds will be a part of a, a lot of the the bigger developments that are coming in that space agreed agreed quason i gotta say well said man um thank you again for coming on the channel today we really appreciate it man that's all the questions that i have for you today uh was there anything else that you wanted to say to the audience about lost worlds any any last words any any messages you wanted to get across to to everyone watching yeah i mean it's really simple man uh comes to lostworlds.io and and play with the app open up your your mobile device you kind of explore something new right open up your mobile device get metamask on there put an avax put two on there there's there's definitely some nfts that you can mint right now and those nfts they have different forms of utility and value that you can play with if you're interested in, as a creator or an artist right and you want to be able to use location as a means of expression within the nft space or if you're a business that wants to really uh use nfts to drive foot traffic and this is a way for you to explore that you know hit us up right uh go to go to the lost worlds twitter dm us hit us up in our discord discord.gg slash lost worlds um and, and we're there we're open we are a utility for the community we would say um and we just want to build um, so if you're if you're willing to build we're willing to build with you perfect perfect man well thank you again for tuning in we definitely appreciate your time quason and we loved hearing about your project so take care brother thank you